Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the Home Wrecker Podcast. I am the Golden Greek Alex Arion, joined as always by my beautiful, lovely, gorgeous, amazing trophy wife, Monique. Monique, how you doing? Hi, I'm great. How about yourself? I'm great. Excellent. I just put on a pair of sunglasses you for did. absolutely no reason. And then mine are right over there too, and I'm like, darn it, I should just grab them and put them on so yeah. we can match. I'm going to take these off now. There you go. So what's going on with you? What's uh, what's new mm. with you, my lady? New? Uh, I opened up an Etsy shop for my tarot readings in Organite, and I'm making loose incense ones and all those kinds of fun things. And I was actually outside making more Organite today. Beautiful day for it. It was. It was gorgeous. We went for a walk. We mm -hmm. went for a drive. Yeah. Yeah, very nice day. Yes, it was. Getting outside. Yes. Getting some fresh air. Uh-huh. Fuck you, quarantine and shutdown. I notice a lot more people every single day. There's more traffic on the roads. There's more people out and about doing things. You can only keep people inside for so long. This is true, especially when the weather's getting nicer. Oh, yeah. If this was, if this was something that was done, this, I'm going to call it a plandemic. If this was done in the winter time, nobody would bat an eye. Nobody would care. Be like, eh, okay. I have to stay home, shovel it's, my driveway. It's cold shows. anyway, yeah. so whatever. But you're not going to keep people inside for much longer. Nope. Anyhow, I don't really want to talk too much about that Instead, whole, whole deal. let's talk about what we did last night. Okay, but before that, I want to talk about something really crazy. What? A new conspiracy, well it's not really new, it's been around for a while. I actually found out about this many years ago, but just kind of, eh, kind of blew it off because it was, it's really crazy. It's a really crazy conspiracy theory. Okay, let's hear it. Birds, you know like birds the fly in the air? Yes, I know what birds are. Birds are not real. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's crazy, right? It's <laughs> then what are they? Are they like an optical illusion? No, no, no. They're they're real. There's birds up there, but they're not birds as we believe them to be. I don't this, understand. This is not my theory. This is a conspiracy theory that's out there that I was just reintroduced to again earlier today. My brother actually texted me this. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about this one. So can you elaborate more? I'm going to put a link in the show notes so people can look at it themselves. Because it's crazy. It's way out there. And I'm going to say this. There's a little bit of... There's, there's parts of it that make sense. But it's nuts. Okay, what is it? The birds aren't real. That they're what, what, robots being they're... used to surveil us. Yes, they are... It's actually ingenious if it was real. It's genius. But, I, I, come so on. I've bird? seen okay. dead birds with ants on them. No, I, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Go ahead. Is this all birds? I think, I, I, all right. That's why I'm going to put the link in the show notes, so don't quote me on this. But I want to say that somewhere on there it said like 90% of birds in the United States are robots. That they are being used to surveil us and have been since the 50s. They are dead. They've been killed by our government. I'm going to tell you right now why that's not true. No, no, what? Hold on. Why what's not true? None this, of it? None of it? 90% no, of or right. whatever go, go are ahead. fake. Okay. Because we see birds all the time. But they're robots. But it, how do robots lay eggs? All the little nests every spring under our deck? They, they make their be, little nests and they, they must be lay eggs. eggs and the eggs hatch and the little I'm not are saying born. I agree with this theory. So wait a minute, I think I'm just it's curious. out there and it's are, nuts. I'm just telling you it's a new one. And how do they fly? Like are they like waterproof? They're bird they're robots. How do drones fly? How do they fly? They're robots. I mean how do they fly in the rain? Like they are they waterproof? I guess. I don't know. I didn't make them. I don't know. I'm gonna have to I'm pretty open to things. Listen. But this I'm gonna say no. I'm going to say there is some, I think there's a little bit of validity to it. I don't think it's as out there and insane as, as I wouldn't this. be surprised if they did that with some 
birds. That's that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't be but surprised if some. But say like all the birds, birds are dead in the U.S. That's you have. I'm gonna put like I said. The link's gonna be in the show notes because I want people to look at it for themselves. And you have to go in and read the history of this theory. It's nuts. It's crazy. But it's if nothing if nothing else, it's entertaining. And if you do buy into it, hey, more power to you. Everybody, think freely. Think for yourself. I just think it's it's nuts. We'll have to research this more. Oh, I I, I did. But right I off did the some. okay, right off the <laughs> bat, I just I don't know. I mean, I worked in veterinary medicine for almost twenty years, and I had we had birds come in. They were real. There were no robotic parts in them if they needed. Yeah, did you have done. blue jays and robins and like, cardinals and those kind of birds all come in? Pigeons. We did a t surgery on a toucan once. So. Yeah, but do you see toucans flying around in the city? I know. I'm just saying, but like. Those are the birds. those are the, those are the kind of those are the kind of birds that this theory is saying are robots. They're not real. And you want to know why this whole thing started, or or this supposed operation, if you will, started by Do the town. government. Do tell. Allegedly, according to this theory, I think it was Alan Dulles, the CIA director way back in the day, was getting upset that the pigeons were pooping on his vehicle. And damn it, he wanted to get rid of those birds. I swear, this is this is all, I'm putting it in the show notes, you gotta read okay, it. Okay, wait a minute. With that it's said. It's crazy. So do the robotic birds I don't have know. fake poop that comes out on people's cars? I don't know. I don't know. That's why I said I don't like, buy it. I don't buy the, the, to the scale that they're saying, but I do believe that that is actually an ingenious way to spy on people. Yeah. A, a robot I have bird. to say, though, there have been instances where people have called the police saying that somebody has shot their car with paintball guns because it's like a pinkish red like color blasted all over their cars and the police come and they find out that there's berries in the area and then it turns the birds poop like this pink red color and so people think it's paint but it's actually bird poop so i would have to say some of the birds are still real they're not saying that a hundred percent of the birds are dead i know Just but even like 90 percent is a super high number i'm not trying to defend the theory i'm telling you what the theory is and I'm also saying that I find some of it could be valid. Because it is, if you think about it, it's quite genius to have birds survey. You, yeah. you, people put out bird houses, people bird, bird, bird watch, yeah. bird feeders, all that kind of stuff. It's actually quite an ingenious way to surveil people if that, if that was a real thing. And that's I'm not all saying, I'm saying that that's not true or impossible. I'm just saying the amount they're saying. I don't know if I agree with you have, I think that is you have true. to you have to read their site and and I looked on there because I wanted to contact somebody I wanted to get somebody on the show to talk about it to, because I don't think the site does it justice there's got to obviously be more to it but I, there was nothing on there it was just like the contact does is like a support line for their or, or a support email excuse me for their t-shirts I am intrigued. So, it, it, like I said, I heard about it years ago and I was like, come on. And then I just, my brother reintroduces me, sent me a text message with the link to the website. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot all about this. And then I'm like, you don't have to read this. I'm, I'm bored. I'm like, all right. Kids are watching a, a movie, so I'm, like, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to read this. And I'm like, okay. I can see there being some validity to some of it, but no way. Like, the Vietnam War was not fought because of what we've been told, which I, I believe that. But the real reason is because they needed to go there to get aluminum to make this legion of fake birds. John F. Kennedy, G, uh, John F. Kennedy, excuse me, JFK, do you know why he was assassinated? Because For the he, aluminum? Because he found out about the secret project and all the birds being killed. Oh, this God. is the theory. It's not me. I'm telling you, this is a conspiracy theory. Now, I think, me, I think that because they even mentioned the CIA in it and everything, the CIA started, I think 
this whole theory, this conspiracy theory, is probably a CIA op, in my view, in my opinion. Because if you look at some of the people, because there's a couple of links on their website, you can go and you, they have local chapters of, of the Birds Aren't Real movement. The people that are, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but they're kind of out there a little bit. Extreme? So the, uh, yeah, you could say extreme. And they, uh, I only watched a couple of videos on one of the group's Instagram pages, and it was somebody went to a, uh, a Democratic rally or something just recently to inform people about the Birds Aren't Real movement. And he was laughing the whole time, treating it kind of like a joke. So I'm like, if this is who's representing your movement, it's either this is just way out there and somebody made it up as a joke, which could be, very well could be. It's played as serious, but it could be just a big put on, a big joke. Or it is some kind of a government misinformation, disinformation operation. Just, just now, hold on, to make conspiracy theorists look fucking crazy because because we don't look crazy enough right are you kidding me now well, conspiracy theorists are fucking the smartest people alive because they've okay, been predicting yeah. everything that's happening it's right all, now it's, it's all, all coming true. true yeah everything we've okay, all been so talking about for years if there's somebody who wants to say oh these birds are fake why don't they just get a hunting rifle shoot a bird down open it up and show it's a robot that's a wonderful question but what about the hunters who shoot down like birds, like game birds, pheasants, things Look, like that. I see birds all the time. We have birds here. We have turkeys that, that lay eggs under our we deck. Do. They make they build nests. We have birds building a nest in our dryer vent on the side of our house. I know birds are real. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am telling you this conspiracy theory, and I think that there are some things in it that could be valid. Where it's like I said, it's genius like to have a bird like as 10%. a ten percent. Yeah, I guess, but that's okay. not what they—that's not what they say. They say I know. birds aren't real. That is the conspiracy theory. Anyhow, I'm gonna put that show, the link in the show notes. Check it out. If nothing else, get entertained. I mean, there—I'm gonna—I'm gonna give you fair warning, because it's in the the story of the whole conspiracy theory. It may disturb you. It may anger and upset you, and they actually have a link in there for mental and emotional support if you need it, based on the information. I'm not kidding. This is in the... the you got to read that. I should have had you read it before we talked about it. But I figured I'd get your, your genuine reaction first. <laughs> and again, if, if you believe in this, if you believe it, hey, that's cool. I believe some stuff that people think I'm crazy for, even though I... A lot of it's come true now. So, I don't like crazy, so... Yeah. Believe what you want to believe. Yeah. I'm just saying... It's... It's out there. Hmm. It's out there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But, again, you've been warned. The information may disturb you. Please it may don't... anger you to know that your government has been spying on you this whole time with birds. But please don't shoot down birds, because odds are they are real living creatures. Oh, one of the one of the parts of it that was awesome too, and then we'll move on. Do you know how they charge their batteries? Their feet okay. are where they do they stand they on little from. iPad chargers. Well, do you ever notice how birds are always on the power lines? Yeah. That's how they charge. It's genius conspiracy theory. It's genius. Alrighty then. Anyhow, moving on. So check the that more one out. you know. So, yeah, right? So check that one out, everybody. Birds aren't real. Yeah. Awesome. Alright, so moving on from that. And we might revisit this again in the future. We'll see. Oh, we have to. If I, I can need find... to do some more reading on this. If I can find somebody that's willing to come on and talk about it, I'd love to have a serious conversation oh, to yeah. find out why they are so adamant and believe it so much. But like I said, I couldn't I couldn't get I mean, I couldn't get a hold of anybody through their website. I couldn't find any kind of a contact. So we'll we'll work on that. Okay. Again, moving on. Moving on. 
So last night. Last night we were in bed. Kids are asleep, feeling adventurous, and we decided to watch a movie. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, where's this? You're like, going with that? Yeah. Where are you going with this one? No, uh, we we found a movie. What was it on? Voodoo. Voodoo. Yeah, yeah it was on Voodoo. Voodoo. It was free with ads, and it's called Time Trap. And I had to look down at it because I can't remember the name of this movie. I want to call it Time Warp. I don't know why. I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? It's okay. Yeah, I just, I can't. It For wasn't, some reason, it my brain doesn't want to work. It wasn't like a widely released movie or anything, so. But it was awesome. This movie was awesome. Spoilers. We're going to give spoilers. Big spoilers. So, this will be like another re home record movie review. Yeah. So the movie's called Time Trap. I guess it was released in 2017. You've got the thing right here. But I no, know. but something else in 2018 that it, I was I, I believe it was 2018 is when it was. So maybe released. it was made in 2017 and released in 2018. Like some stuff says 2017, <clears throat> some says 2018. I don't know. Hence my confusion. I'm confused. What else is new? It came out a couple years ago. So, this movie was written and directed by Mark Dennis. And one of the main characters who actually isn't in it as much as I guess I expected him to be, but Andrew Wilson from Owen and Luke Wilson, his brother, his older brother. You may so know wait, wait, wait. him. He's the older brother? Yeah. Okay, you said Owen and Luke Wilson, his older brother. Well, they're older brothers. <laughs> All right, I'm just making sure. Yeah. Everyone might recognize him from one of our favorite movies, Idiocracy. Yes. Yes. He was Beef Supreme. True. So is it like rehabilitation with the monster traps and stuff? Yeah. There are a lot of people in this movie who aren't, we don't really know him that well, I guess, but they're in stuff. I, I've never heard of any of these folks. And I honestly, I didn't, I didn't recognize Andrew Wilson, so. I kept looking at him like, this dude looks so familiar. What do I know this dude from? He was in something. And then I looked up on IMDb and I was like, aha, idiocracy. He's in other stuff too. But for us, that's the most yeah. recognizable movie. Yes. So do you want to give like a little brief? I'll let you do it. All right. You're better at it. Okay. Thank you, I guess. I recognize my weaknesses. <laughs> All right. So the movie starts off, the, does it say their character names? It, is it yeah, that? Hopper. So yes. Hopper, it, Andrew Wilson's character Hopper, uh, we thought was the main character, but he ends up not being in the movie as much as you would think. It starts out, he's a, is he an archaeology professor or teacher? He's, he's, he's a professor. So, but I think it's of archaeology because the, Something stu like that, the yeah. students, but anyway. Uh, He's a professor, teacher, some of some sort. I believe it was archaeology, and he. Is, the movie starts. He's going to look for a, a group of missing hippie hikers who went searching for the Fountain of Youth. Mm -hmm. Now, this movie takes place in Texas, so he goes looking for these hikers. But before that, he meets up with a couple of his students. Well, he went to the site. He checked it out, that, he I, found the van, right. 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 and then he uh, made a call to one of his students, um, what are those called, the people, like the teaching assistant type people? Yeah, TAs, I guess. Yeah, uh, one assistants. of those, he, to um, one of the other characters, Jackie. Okay. And that's played by uh, Brianne Howie. Calls her, is like, oh, I found the site, and he's, he's saying, don't tell Taylor. So I guess that's the other teaching assistant. And Taylor, that's the guy. Yeah, the, okay. the, yeah, and that's played by Riley McClendon. So he gets to his house, and Jackie's there with Taylor. So he ended up saying, "Nope, never mind. I'm gonna go check this out all by my lonesome." So he goes to the site, and while he's in the, it's it's a cave. He finds the van, the the hippie van, mm -hmm. and we find out later on that it's his parents that went missing mm -hmm. in the '60s. Yeah. It's his parents and his sister. Because she was sick. So they went looking for the Fountain of Youth. To save their daughter. To save their daughter, right. His, uh, Hopper's sister. Right. So he goes into a cave and he notices... It's kind of weird. It, like, you can see the air is, is kind of changing. It's... 
It, they say it's like it's like, kind of like wet, like it's like it's the moisture, air, like you thick get and damp. Yeah, thick, yeah, right. And but you like visually for the viewer that's watching the movie, you can see the air. They do some kind of a weird visual effect where it looks like it just looks. You can weird. just see there's something else. You can going see there's on something there. going yeah. on there. It's way. It's yeah. You can just see that it's different. And he ends up going back, and that's when he meets up with the students, and he says he's going to do this. And he's doing it alone. He's going to go find them alone. Whatever. Anyhow, the students decide, well, we're going to go anyway. We're going to go. And well, no, he was gone, um, I think, for two days. Is that what it was? Two yeah, days he, was he was gone two gone? days. Oh, I thought I thought they just went right after. Nope. It was okay. like two days. They waited and they're like, we haven't heard from him. So, let's, okay. or it might have even been a week. It was a, enough point, enough time went by where they were like, we need to go check on him. Well, they were concerned. Okay. Yeah. Well, see, I thought they went right after him. So here I am. You're saying I'm doing a great job with the synopsis. So I already messed it up. That's okay. Anyway, so they they all group together. There's uh, well, five. Well, they need a ride. Four. They need they, a ride. They need so something they get... with four wheel drive. So they call um, Kara, who's another girl in class who I guess likes Taylor. Yes. And she's played by Cassidy Gifford, and Kara has to bring her younger sister, Vives. Played by Olivia Dragusevich. Drag, Dragu, 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 Dragusevich. Something like that. And her friend Furby is coming, played by Max Wright. So you have these two like kids who are like 13 coming along with these young adults to go in a cave, which didn't seem very smart. Right? Okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So. This kid, Furby, I guess, has, like, a vlog, and he has lots of, like, GoPro cameras and a selfie stick, and he's documenting everything, and that comes into play in the movie. And he ends up hanging outside while they go in the cave. They find the hippie van, and they see at the trunk of the van is a rope that goes down to a cave, and they're thinking that this is where Hopper's gone to. Right. So they, they all they all go into the cave and they start to descend the rope. They follow the rope, they start to descend and go down, and the frickin' rope breaks. Well, not just that. Before the rope broke, they're going down and the uh, the Vives, the 13-year-old girl, the younger sister, yeah. she went down first, and her sister's calling her, and she's and not responding. That's right, okay. So yeah, they sure. all go down, except for Vives at the top of the cave, yeah, As Furby you're going down, to, Furby was made to wait up, yeah. up at the top of the cave. As they're going down, you can see like where that air changes, and then it, it, it it's like it cuts off communication. Well, it's like a portal. I, I guess we left yeah. I guess we left off kind of a, a, a part there at, when Hopper goes mm -hmm. into the cave system. He goes in a different cave. There was he like goes, three different openings. Yeah, he went to an opening where he was just he just walked in. He didn't have to climb in with a rope mm -hmm. or anything. He just walked in. And when he when he pulled up, there's also a hole in the ground that he tied ropes to as like a plan B. But um, the cave that he went into, it was up on a hill. He went into the opening, and when he looked in, he saw when he the first time he went, he saw a guy who looked like a cowboy, a cowboy. and he had guns. That's right. Yeah. But the guy wasn't moving. That's right. And so he just like looked around, he had his flashlight, and he, he was like, hello, nothing. So he booked it out of there, and that's when he called Jackie and right, went back right. home. So when he came back the next day, that guy is still there. And he's like, what the? So he goes through, and he feels like something's wrong, and he goes in the cave, and the cowboy then starts moving, walking around the, the corner of the cave, and then he hears something, gets freaked out, turns out, runs out of the cave, and at this point, it's nighttime, and... You don't know how much time has gone by, but there's, like, overgrowth on his car. He can't start it. His yeah. dog's gone. Yeah, it looks like there's there's so much overgrowth there. It it's like, like years has gone by. Years, right? yeah. yeah. So he has no idea what's going on. Right. And so now we get to the children. Or I, I say children. Well, the younger folk. Uh, the group of kids, teenagers, whatever, they all come down, and, and they're in the cave, and they're descending down. Furby stays up top. Mm -hmm. They're descending into the cave, the air changes, they feel the moisture, all that kind of stuff. So all of them get down to the bottom, and they're just kind of, I think, doesn't one of, them, one of them gets hurt, right? Or two of them get hurt. Well, no, that's, yeah. yeah they well, get hurt there because the rope snapped. Well, before, what had happened was 
they um, there's they're in this cave area and there's different ways to go and they hear something so they go to check it out and whatever they're hearing freaks them out they decide let's get out of here so Jackie said I'll they climb up on, on the, the radio road. they were on the radio nope, right it wasn't on the radio yet oh okay so Jackie climbs up and as she's climbing up the rope it breaks and she was probably like 20 feet up maybe so she falls Taylor goes to catch her and she kind of landed on him so she hurt her ankle he hurt his arm that's right and that's when they're using the radio to contact Furby and then they hear like somebody coming through and they're like who is this and they're like it's Furby help me but it sounded really weird it sounded weird yeah, yeah like an older guy yeah and and he's like, who is this? And they thought it was uh, Hopper. And then he's like, it's Furby. And they're like, there's no way like that's him. And they thought Furby was messing with them. They yeah. thought he cut the rope. And it was weird. It was kind of creepy. Yeah, it was Yeah, yeah, it was really strange. And so then they go and they start exploring the cave a little bit more to try to figure out a way to get out. And they find Furby. Well, they find the opening where Hopper had his plan B rope. The other opening in the ground and Kara goes around there's like this big rock kind of leading up to the opening but it's what 90 feet or something yeah, yeah, to the actual opening yeah. but you see the light and she's like telling her sister like get out now this was in kind of an annoying part of the movie because you know people are like this you have an older sister who is visually like she's Wait, upset telling her to get out she, she's her sister was with her and Taylor was there. They left Jackie behind. Yeah. And she's like, Yeah, when get they found out. Furby. Yeah, but yeah. we didn't know what was there. She's like, get views out. And they're like, what? What is it? She's like, get her out of here. And they're just standing there like, what? What is it? And she's like, get out. So they go and they see Jackie like crawling because she didn't want to be left alone. And they come back and they're like, what is it? And Kara's crying and she's super upset. And they're like, we're all, you know, stuck in this position. So you don't have have to get upset and she shows Taylor and they're like oh my god so they take the camera and are looking with the camera to see what's over the rock and they Who realize is? I'm sorry uh Veeves and Jackie are looking over the rock and they realize it's Furby who's dead so like I was saying yeah. they find Furby I didn't know we were going to get like are we just going to do a walk through the entire do we just I don't know. put the turn the I damn, feel like that's what we're doing we should just turn the damn movie on and, yeah. and commentate over it for Christ's sake uh, anyway, yeah, so they find Furby and they realize, okay, what the hell, what's he doing? He's dead. He's, it, it looked like his, his radio was smashed, his neck was broken, yeah. he was he's dead. And so they get his camera, because his camera's still on, and they rewind it, and they see, they play back all this footage of him, days, weeks have gone by, right? Uh, I think days went by. Days? It was overnight and by the next day because no because he it, he'd been he'd eaten all the food he drank all the water so a few days had gone by at least and yeah because they're out in the middle of nowhere and yeah. nobody knows where nobody they are because they, they lied about they where lied they were going, where they were going. Yeah. yeah so nobody knows how to come looking for him or mm -hmm. where to find and he can't drive that. so yeah so yeah he a, a couple of days go by and he they the camera pretty much it stops or the recording stops when he falls. And what happened was, as he's coming down, the rope broke. It snapped off. One of the things, too, that you notice is the light keeps changing from, like, once they're Yeah, every, the cave, time, every time they're looking at the opening of the cave, the light keeps changing. It's like light dark, light dark. Like, as it's if, really like, how you fast. see, like, you know the videos, like, in Fast Forward of, like, the sun setting, like, it's light, it's dark? It's like light dark, light dark. And it's, it's quick. It's like really fast. Yeah. Like every second it's changing. Yeah. Or half a second. Yeah. So anyhow, uh, without going into every single mm -hmm. detail, they come to find out that, they, they well, they don't come to, they figure out that their time is changing differently while they're in the tunnel from what's happening outside. While they're in the tunnel, it seems like normal time has passed, a couple hours have passed. On the outside, what's happening is years yeah. are going by like, like for lots every, of years. every second is can, like, you, can you go into the i believe it was in the trivia here yeah let me where it actually it breaks it down and tells you exactly how much time it lasts yeah so it says um four seconds equals one year one minute equals 15 years 
one hour equals 900 years. So by the time like they like they were there, let's say if it was six hours, 5,400 years had passed. Yes, so they are in this cave. Which is like a fountain of youth. <laughs> for six hours and over 5,000 years pass while they're in the cave. We get to the point where they're, they're exploring more parts of the cave and they find some, they find a cowboy, they find Hopper's parents mm -hmm. and, and sister are in there, they're dead. And cavemen. And they find cavemen. Who are like the guardians. Primitive cavemen yeah. who are guarding the, this fountain of youth. So, and it, yeah, because I guess there's this other area where it's like, the actual true fountain, which yeah. is there, and there's like this other like time warp thing, like they pass through, but it takes longer to go through, and yeah, it's really interesting. It's almost like these layers. Of... This movie was really, really, really yeah. good. I really was very pleasantly surprised by it. So they're getting to a point now where they want to get out of this cave. They don't care the time has passed. They got to get out of here. Kara climbs up the the hole that Furby had fallen down. Mm -hmm. She climbs it because... Just totally freestyle. Free, yeah, yeah she ha she's the only one that's not injured, she, so she's the only one who can make the climb. And she's up there, she goes up there, she's out there for about a half hour, well, I mean, in real in movie time, it was like five minutes, but for... Her time. For, for sake of the story, she was up, out of there for 30 minutes. And... She gets out, it's completely, it's desolate. There's no vegetation anywhere. It's like a desert. It's completely, it's just, it's very different. She's having a hard time breathing. She looks up in the sky and the clouds kind of part and you see that the atmosphere is like gone. Oh yeah, there's like this big giant like there's sandstorm. Like a, there's like a big sandstorm coming It looks like a tsunami like coming. Yeah, and then and up in the sky is like this big craft. It's like a triangular Like a triangular craft. craft. It's huge, yeah. like bigger than the moon. is just up there hovering. And she's like, doesn't know what the hell to do. So she just goes back down into the hole and she comes back down in. And I'm thinking, she's going to go back down and she'll, you know, like, centuries have passed or something, but she comes back down and I guess only like a second had passed. Yeah. Ac according to, you know, the way the time went or whatever. So she comes back in Ooh. and they're, and they're like, well, you're going to go out and look or what? And she's like, what are you talking about? I was gone for a half hour. She was recording the whole time. So Ooh. she went back. What? When you said that centuries had passed, it's when you're in the cave, time flies by. But if you're outside of the cave, it's normal time. It's, yeah, but it's like not even, like 30 minutes is not even a second for them. Right. So she comes back in and they're saying to her, because as, as she's about almost to the top of the cave is when the air changes and you get out of the, the time trap. Mm -hmm. So as she comes back down, they're like, well, where are you going to go? Why are you chickening out? Like, just go. And she's like, what are you talking about? I was just up there. I, w I was up there for over 30 minutes. They're like, yeah, okay. She goes, look, and she takes the camera because they had her record mm -hmm. just in case. So she shows them the video and they're like, they, I guess, were recording at the same time too. They show her, they play back the tape where it seems like she just went up and came and was, nothing had happened. Like a, literally a second had passed. Mm -hmm. So they're like, this is what we saw. She's like, well, this is what I saw. And they're like, oh crap. And they're still trying to figure it out. They're still, tr at this point, they, they figured the time has passed, but they didn't realize how much time had passed. Mm -hmm. And now they're starting to put the pieces together and they're figuring out that the light, it's not days. They're figuring it's seasons or years because mm -hmm. they're looking at the positioning of the sun. And because I guess they slowed down the video, right? And they were watching it and it was the sun. They could see it was the sun cycles. Mm -hmm. And it was just the revolutions around the sun. So they're seeing it's not just a day, it's years that have passed. So you every time I'm watching, I'm like, oh my god, like it's just like nonstop that light. It's the it's years that are passing while they're in this cave. It's crazy. So they they eventually come and they find Hopper. He's still alive, but he's been wounded by the mm -hmm. cavemen, and he's gotten a couple of the cavemen. He got managed to, you know, kill some of them as well. And you see, there's a oh I'm sorry I left the the best part. This like mechanical ladder comes flying down into the into the hole 
And yeah, because Kara tried climbing again. Kara tried like, climbing I'm again. Go She's like, I'm going to go back up and see whatever. Uh, so this like thing comes shooting down into the into the cave as she's climbing. She's like ah, and it's a it opens up and it's a ladder like it's an enormous ladder. So she gets on it and starts to climb up, and then a giant comes. A really tall dude. A really tall dude. Yeah, he had to be what like nine feet tall or something. Yeah. In a spacesuit comes climbing down, and so she climbs back down like ah, you know getting out of there. And he starts kind of walking towards them, and they run away. They don't make contact. They're running because they're scared. And they... Well, because they saw, like, one of the cavemen came by, and he had this, like, thing, and he put it down, and it's like a collar, and it digs into the ground, and yeah, it like, keeps yeah. them there. Yeah, so so he, so, yeah. he downs one of these cavemen that, that goes after him. And so they run away, and he's chasing them through the cave, or we... It, it looks like he's chasing him, but come to find out, he's not really chasing him. He's trying to get to the fountain, which actually is there. They finally find the fountain, and was it Taylor was trying to fight off some of the... He was trying to fight the cavemen so the girls could get by, so and so they start by. bludgeoning him, and that's where we find like some of the other people in the cave. And uh, so the cavemen are just, I guess, trying to kill anyone who goes down there. Yeah. So they beat Taylor and he's out cold it seems. Well he's, he's dead. Is he dead or is yeah, he just he's, No he's okay. dead because the girl, uh, what's her name, Kara, is yeah. over there when she goes and sees him and, he, and he's, he's dead. She's crying because he's dead. They, they bludgeon him to death. Well the, the big giant comes over, like it is getting a vial and filling the, the vial There's with water. There's like a stone, like a like raised stone kind of pool if you will. Yeah, yeah. it's a fountain of youth. But that's not even the fountain. Because remember the part where, like, Hopper was? Yeah. And that's, like, where they showed all that stuff. That's where the real fountain was. Well, okay. We'll run off from the fountain. Yes. Okay. I guess. It was still water from the fountain. Yeah, so he's, like, so, yeah, they... The, so he gets the vial and he brings it over to... Who did he... He brought the vial to somebody at first, didn't he? No. He took the vial. Oh, he, he went over vial. and oh, Kara's like, get vial. away from us. He took alone. the vial and then he started walking over to Taylor because he sees her crying over him. And you're like, oh, this is it. And then, but he grabs him and drags him over and tosses him into the into the pool of water. And she's crying, you know, you know, what are you doing? Stop up. And Taylor comes back to life. Mm -hmm. And then we realize, oh, this is the this is the fountain. This this heals you, brings you back to life. And more cavemen come. So oh, yeah, it's like an army of cavemen. Yeah. No, it was like four, but it was a lot. And well, More than four. Anyway, so they fight him off, but they rip more off the giant's mask, and he's speaking some weird language, and everyone else comes back over, Jackie and Views and everyone. They're all together, and I guess the guy had like kind of predator style on his arm, like a timer, and saying like he was running out of time. And he, what was weird is like, they're like, where, like, where are you from? What year are you from? And he shows, a, this is where I kind of got lost in the movie. He shows like a video clip from the news about them going missing. Right. And the two sisters, Karen and Veeves, their dad, like, you know, please, if you see them. Yeah, yeah, they show the news clip of the dad pleading. For and it's help. brought up later in the movie about how they're kind of famous. But it was like how are like how would they know like who these people were and why would they hold on to that clip? It was just weird. Like this well, guy remember, from thousands of years later has a clip from the news from two thousand and seventeen or two thousand and eighteen. I would hope that technology is that advanced in the future. Why, was, why just, was that weird? Like why like does he were they looking for he them, and how he, did he no, know? No, he did his little gimmick on the on his wrist with the, the predator style yeah. wrist thing. But first it scanned them. So oh, I must have missed that. Yeah, it scanned them first, and then it took a second, and then it... Oh, okay. the news I missed that, and so that makes more sense. it must have identified them somehow. Okay, never mind then. Uh, that's that's I missed them that's, that's what... I, it was quick. It was yeah. like a quick, like, like a laser kind of like scanned over blinked. their faces really quick. No, it, it was fast. But I, I picked up on that. I'm like, oh, okay, so this is like a way of identifying. Then it shows the news clips of their dad and pleading for help to find them. It shows them all missing and all that kind of stuff. And then he played some stuff like from, 
had to have been like decades or a hundred years or so into the future after they went missing so they could see what happened to the world. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really quick though. So you don't really get to see a lot. And then he said he dies, right? Mm -hmm. he, so he's because he can't breathe the he air. Can't, yeah, he can't breathe the air. So they try to give him his mask, but he he can't. I guess he he's he's he did. He's done. And I was wondering, I'm like, well, are they gonna give him some water or do something? The guy just saved this their life and yeah. showed them that this is the final youth because they had no idea. No, they, they never saved the guy. So I thought that was a little bit weird. Well, did they at the end? They may have. I because I, I remember them commenting. Okay, no, they, I think I think everybody that was meant to be saved was meant to be saved got saved at the end. Yeah. So now, what had to be probably another couple hundred years must have gone by or something, and there, well, a couple hundred years on the surface, I should say. A couple minutes. Down there. A couple minutes down there, they start. They take his ladder thing because it's like the it's like a retractable ladder that they well, can hold in their well, hand. Well, first they they go out and they look for Hopper. And they find him. Yeah, yeah. The, well, yeah. yeah. Well, again, they find Hopper. He's alive. He's shot. Everybody went over that. And uh, they're, they're taking his ladder to try to climb up and get out of there because they're thinking, well, maybe we can get out with this now. We have this ladder. We can all climb it. Mm -hmm. Everybody went and healed themselves. Yeah. Oh, so everybody that was injured is now healed. They climb up. And as they're climbing up, uh, is it Kara that's in the lead? Yeah. Kara's in the lead, and she notices the surface is not air anymore. It's like water. Mm -hmm. So she's like, hold on, guys. She reaches up, and something grabs her hand. Yeah, like alien hands. Like alien tentacle kind of yeah. hands. Yeah. So she's like screaming and obviously freaking out. I'd be freaking out. And... She's like fighting. She gets down, and then they pull her up again, and, and she... Get, gets out, but now she's being dangled by her feet. So and half of her is in the by water. Caveman, too. That's right. And the cave. So yeah. So they're they're all like at different stages of the ladder, climbing up, uh, trying to get up out of this hole. And one of the cavemen is looking down, and he sees the button, the push for the retractable ladder. And and they look down and they see him, and he's just like uh, looking at it, and he pushes the button, and the whole thing retracts. And you see everybody that's on the ladder now is just falling to their doom. And But like as that's happening, Kara gets pulled up in the water and it's like showing everyone in slow mo. So she you see like she gets a mask put on, she's getting pulled through the water, we don't know what's happening. They're falling, and then all of a sudden through the water, these like little like tentacle kind wire of wire type like you know how you see like like little cameras with the tubes that like they use in drains and stuff. Yeah, it was yeah, almost it was like, like those come through and it yeah. grabs everybody. Yeah, it wraps around everybody and, and catches them. And, and Kara comes down. She's like, "It's okay, just you know, hold your breath." She, yeah, she comes down in like a suit. Yeah, right. She's wearing like this crazy because suit. because how much time has gone by? Up there, yeah, right. Yeah, like an hour or two could have gone by, and yeah. they're still falling because it's. Real like no time, time yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so it makes sense. With it the was time. really cool yeah, how it was done. It was very well done, yeah. And so they get pulled up, and Furby is is rescued. Yeah, they and brought saved. Furby. They put him in like the Hopper water. gets rescued and saved. Hopper's family. Mm -hmm. They all get rescued and saved, and come to find out they're in an alien spacecraft. Well, not necessarily alien, but they're in a spacecraft. They're a spacecraft, but you see like aliens, like the big heads and like what, what we what we would call alien greys. You see their outline in the ship. They they don't ever come in and, and interact uh -uh. with the with the people, but you see them yeah. off in the so maybe they're us in the future. Maybe that's what well, Amy's trying to say. Well, I think that's what it might but, have been trying to say. Oh, that's right. They colonized Mars. Yeah, that's what it was. That was the news clip that. Earth's atmosphere had gotten yeah. bad or something, and they're now colonizing Mars or something like that. So, but yeah, the finish of the movie is there. They're all just kind of like, "What's going on? What, ha what happened?" And Kara's like, "We're kind of a big deal now, or something, or yeah. we're kind of a big deal, or legendary, or something." I yeah. forget the exact line, but yeah, they're so they all get saved from the time trap, but they're in like the year, whatever, five thousand something years in the future. <laughs> But, yeah, anyway, really well done movie. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. And I don't think it didn't seem like it had a huge budget or anything, but... Yeah, 
It was just. I mean, it, was it has really to cool. have had a good, too, a good budget, like with the effects, but also like little casting. It's not like they had a ton of people in the movie, um, but some of the effects they used. I thought I thought they did a great job. Oh with yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I thought so it was really well done. We watched the trailer for it, and I was like. Oh yeah, I want to watch this. I well, feel like it's gonna be a good movie. Yeah, well, I mean, I saw I saw the title "Time Trap." I'm like, time trap? Is it like a time travel movie? Because I love that kind of stuff, even though I don't believe it's real. Uh, yeah, so we watched the trailer. I'm like, this, this looks pretty damn good. So yeah, we watched it. And I'm glad we did. And, and yeah, it was a fantastic movie. So we highly recommend it. Two thumbs up for me. And Two me. thumbs up from my lady. Yeah. Yeah. So really good. any other thoughts you want to share on this movie? I don't know. No, it was good. It was very. I actually kind of want to watch it again just to kind of pick up some of the stuff that maybe I missed. I guess. Mm. Uh, I'll watch it again with you. And just I, yeah, I just kind of want to now. Like anytime I rewatch a movie, I try to pick apart the plot a little bit and find the plot holes and that kind of thing. But I thought you know the first viewing, I thought it was really well done. I, I thought it was so good. It was just a great concept too. I thought the movie was so good. I wanted to like tweet about it and be like, everyone needs to watch this movie right now. <laughs> it's a, I'd never heard of this movie before. So I, I mean, I don't, I don't think it was released in theaters or anything like that. I'm pretty sure it was one of those direct to streaming kind of movies. I don't know. I don't remember it. But again, we haven't really had cable for a couple of years now. I don't yeah, but again, it's, I, I don't, I never heard of it at all. It doesn't look like it was released. Yeah, because it was released in 2018. Yeah, it was released November 2nd of 2018. Hmm. It was filmed in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah. But anyway, we found it on Voodoo, so yes. if you have and Voodoo, it's free. it's free. With ads. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean. Hmm. That was like pick the worst spot with the ads, though. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, I gotta say, that's the one You're thing. You're like, oh, what's happening? <gasps> Why? Like, Seriously? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's never like at the, at the, like a good spot for the suspense. So it's like right in the middle of the suspense. So you're like, <sighs> and you watch the ad and it comes back and it's still in the middle of the suspense. And you're like, oh, oh, uh, oh okay. Yeah, that's the only, that's the only part that kind of stinks. But it is free if you have voodoo, but so. But it's free. If it's free, it's for me. Right. Yeah, so good, good movie. Yes. I was, I was really impressed by it. Like I said, pleasantly surprised. We probably built it up so much that people are going to watch it and be like, wasn't that great? It's awesome. I think the acting, the actors did a really good job. Yeah, I thought it was good. Like I, like I said, I didn't know who any of these people were. I didn't recognize Mr. Wilson at all. I didn't recognize any of the players at all. I And I, and I didn't go on IMDb to see what other stuff anybody's done. Um, so I can't really speak to any, any of their other work. But I thought in this movie they were all really well. Mm -hmm. I, th I thought they all did really well, I should say. I thought this movie, they're all really well. What does that even mean? Me uh, like ye. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, so no, I thought they all did a really good job. Yeah. Uh, it, the, the, the director also wrote it, so mm -hmm. I, you know, hats off to him for a, a great idea, and, and I, I thought executed well as, uh, also. So, so one of the points I brought up to you last night was if spots like that existed, it made me think of missing 411. Because what if there were these spots, and maybe they move, but if there are these spots that people just can kind of walk through and it changes time. Yeah, well, I mean, that's actually a theory with the missing 411 is that that's what is occurring in some areas that, and that would explain why people or their things are found in places that have previously been searched before because that is something that is occurring with the time. Or the, the frequency. Or it's like a different frequency I've heard. Yeah, I've heard I've heard that theory yeah. as well. So could be a number of things. And, and that's something I brought up to before is if there was some kind of wormhole or time warp that they went through, but seeing something like that in a movie made me think like what if that's what happens and people go missing and then they show up at a different time. Well, I mean, there's stories of that kind of stuff happening. And maybe it's not like time, years so. are going by in a matter of seconds. Maybe it's hours are going by in a matter of minutes or something. Who knows? I mean, there's so much stuff that's unexplained or that that we don't know about 
It could be. I mean, again, this is a movie. Obviously, it's somebody's uh, mm -hmm. idea that they a fictional idea that they turn into a movie. But I mean, could could something like this explain like the missing four one one? Sure. Who knows? It was just popped in my head. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it, it's a way to explain it for sure. Yeah. If if something like this exists now, the Fountain of Youth. That's something I, I want to research a little bit because I know that's obviously a legend and a story that's yeah. been passed on for years and years. And the actual Fountain of Youth is rumored to be in Florida, not Texas. Yes, I've heard that. And was it Ponce de Leon, Ponce de Leon. that was looking for it or searching okay. for it? And that would have been, what, in the 1500s, I believe? I don't know. Again, something, something maybe we'll look yeah. into and maybe do a show on in the future. But yeah, it was, the concept of this movie was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed it. Medik really enjoyed it. So check it out, and yeah. hopefully you'll enjoy it too. Hopefully they checked it out before they listened or watched us. Who? The people listening now, or watching us. Oh, I hope. well, I mean, we did say spoilers. Yeah. And I'll put in the show notes to spoilers. Mm -hmm. Watch it. <laughs> but yeah, check it out. Definitely watch this movie. It was, it was, it was really good. And, and now, I mean, where everybody right now has so much time on their hands. If you got nothing better to do and you're sick of watching Netflix shows or turn off the damn news... Yeah, watch this. Turn yeah. your brain off for a bit and just uh, be entertained. This is really good. Uh -huh. Really good concept, a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And watch it and share your thoughts with us. Yeah, you can reach us on uh, any of our social media platforms. We have a Twitter. At Homewrecker Pod. Instagram. Homewrecker Podcast. Or go to our website. Homewreckerpodcast.com. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button wherever you listen to your podcasts. And if you don't mind, leave us a five-star review. It really helps us to grow the show, get more eyeballs on the show, more ears on the show, I mm, should say. Please. If you're watching on YouTube or Brighteon, subscribe, like our channel. We appreciate that mm -hmm. as well. And uh, if you've got nothing else you want to share... If you go on our website, get a shirt, a tank oh. top, t-shirt. We know money's tight for some people, so obviously not everyone can, but if you can... You can support us that way because then people will see your shirt and be like, hey, what's that shirt about? And then you can tell them. Yes. Buy a shirt. Yeah. And wherever you are, we hope that you are safe, that you're healthy, that uh, you're getting through this ridiculous time in the most productive, healthy manner possible. Mm -hmm. But until next time. I am the Golden Greek Alexarion. I've been joined as always by the beautiful, lovely, gorgeous, amazing. Did I say fantastic? No. Ah. Keep going. Fantastic. Trophy life. I love you. I love you. Monique. And you've been listening to the Homewrecker Podcast.